What is up, people? This is Danny from Plug and Play, and today we have a simpler tutorial for you all about making a sexy little swoosh animation transition thingy inside of After Effects. It's really easy to do, so let's jump right in. All right, once we're inside of After Effects, let's go ahead and make a new composition. I'm gonna call mine Transition. Let's make it 1920 by 1080, frame rate of 30, and then 10 seconds long. Let's call up our Ellipse tool, and while holding Shift, let's draw a circle here. Let's center that in our composition, and we can set this stroke to be about five to begin with, and we can get rid of the fill. Let's do Commander Control F, and let's look up the size, and let's set a keyframe on that, and let's set it to be about 200. Next, let's duplicate this about five times. Let's select all of them, call up the keyframes, and we want each subsequent layer to be about 10 pixels larger than the previous layer, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll set this to be 210, 220, 230, 240, and then 250. Let's select all of our keyframes here, and let's jump into the graph editor. Let's select all these keyframes in the graph editor, make sure that this transform box is toggled, and let's start scaling these guys up. Now the reason that we're doing this inside of the graph editor is so that we can retain the original size of the first layer and scale up all these subsequent layers proportionately. As you can see, this first layer is still at 200, while all these other layers are still scaling up. So let's keep on scaling them up. Let's make sure that we get to a point where we're covering the entire composition. Maybe something around here, maybe a little bit taller. All right, this is a pretty good size, so let's go back to our timeline. Make sure that our keyframes are at the beginning of the timeline. And let's start scaling up the stroke here. Again, we want to scale this up so that it covers the entire composition and that we can see the background. All right, 198 seems pretty good for me. And let's do Commander Control F and let's look up cap. And let's set all these caps to be uh, round caps. Okay, great. Let's go inside of this first layer here. Let's go in contents and let's add a trim pass to this content. Let's set a keyframe on both the offset and the end. And then we can move these two keyframes about 20 frames forward. Let's set the end to be zero to begin with and then the offset to be negative 90. Let's copy these keyframes and then let's select the rest of our layers here. Make sure that we are at the beginning of the timeline and let's paste these guys into there. All right, nice. Uh, next thing, let's select all of our layers again. Let's do Commander Control F and let's look up the stroke. Let's set a keyframe on all these strokes here and let's move that keyframe about 20 frames forward. And then let's set another keyframe and let's set that keyframe to be about 10. Okay, let's select all of our keyframes. Let's right click, Keyframe Assistant and Easy Ease. Next thing that we need to do, we need to offset all these layers. So I'm going to be using Lazy to do that. That's our tool that uses uh, a Bezier curve to offset layers along your timeline, but you can do this manually as well. I'm going to be doing an ease in curve here at about 25 frames long. Let's go to the end here, select all of them, and we can scale them down a little bit more just so that they are all fitting perfectly inside of our composition. All right, that's looking pretty good. As you can see, there's a little dot inside of here that needs to be fixed. So let's select all of our layers. Let's do Command and Control F and let's look up Stroke. Let's select these keyframes, jump into the graph editor, and let's move these top keyframes up a tiny bit. Right there seems to be pretty good. All right, great. Let's go ahead and let's duplicate all of these layers and let's move them to the top. Let's make this a pretty different color, maybe a nice uh, aqua. That looks cool. All right, one thing that I'm going to change about this, I'm going to set the offset of the trim paths on all these guys to be negative 180 instead of negative 90. So we can select all of our layers here. Let's do Commander Control F and let's look up offset. Okay, let's go in, let's select all of these keyframes and let's jump into the graph editor. We can go ahead and select these bottom uh, keyframes down here that are at negative 90, and let's drag them down to be um, 100, negative 180. 
that's just going to give our animation a little bit more life. And again, this is all personal preference. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right around 180 should work just fine. Okay, great. Let's go ahead. Let's duplicate these bottom two layers right here. And let's send them to the bottom. And let's go inside of these layers. Let's delete the stroke width uh, keyframes on both of these. And then let's select all of our layers except for those bottom two. And let's move these forward about five frames. Let's select these middle layers here. And let's change the stroke color on these guys. Maybe make it a nice yellow. All right, let's see what we have so far. I'm going to change up one more thing. Let's go ahead and select these bottom two layers here. And then we can do Command or Control F. And let's look up the um, start of these trim paths here. And let's set some keyframes here. We can call up the rest of our keyframes on these bottom two layers. And let's drag the start to be at the beginning of these sets of keyframes. And then we can go ahead and let's set the start to be 100. So that's going to mean that these things are going to spin around to begin with. But at the end of these animations, there's going to be nothing left there. It's just going to provide a little bit more life into our animation. And let's make sure that we set these um, ending start 100% keyframes at the end of these layers here. We can go ahead and select both of these. And let's right click, go to Keyframe Assistant, and then hit Easy Ease. And while we still have these uh, keyframes selected, let's shift them forward about five frames. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to enjoy this tutorial. If you haven't done so, please go ahead and hit subscribe, and I'll catch you on the flippity flip.